Well, welcome back to base camp, WNC. Well, it's taken a while to get here, but we finally got here and the solar well pump was finally all done, operational and working. And my other video on it, right here is the grid power and well. It's a big six inch well, so we actually have two pumps down there. The one from the grid, the three horsepower or five horsepower pump, and then this solar powered pump, which of course is powered by these two solar panels. I'll take you around back here in a minute and show it to you. But basically what this solar power pump does is it pumps up this side of the hill way up here and it's almost 90 feet high. Well, it is from the house here. It is 80 some odd feet above the first floor. Water falls at 0.47 something or another pounds per foot, basically a half a pound a foot. So with it coming down 80 feet to the house, you'll have 40 pound of water pressure. So all this thing does is solar power, when the sun comes on, pump comes on, there's no batteries in this system. It pumps the water up to the hill, up to the tank. We'll go up there, I'll show you how that's set up. And it fills it up and keeps it full all day long. And it's a 500 gallon tank. And then all night long, of course, you'll never use 500 gallons. So then it just gravity feeds and there's no electric, no pump involved, anything else because DC powered pumps, this is ideal what they're for right here. And I've helped people and a lot of people wish they were told that before, but a DC powered pump just doesn't act like a surface pump. It doesn't crank back up under pressure and maintain pressure. Yes, there's some companies out there that have stuff that they're selling, but it really just doesn't deal as good. Now this system can be done with a solar powered pump. You could also do this with a regular grid powered pump. And I'm gonna do a different video on that and some benefits with it. So let me take you around back and show you this wiring controller and show you just how easy it really is to put up. Well, here it is. This is a RPS pump system, which I have a dealer for. So if you're interested in one, regardless where you are, give me a shout out and I'll probably cut you a better deal. But this is a RPS 400 pump. Well, here's the insides of it and this is what you're gonna have to get to. But when you get it, it comes with a male and female solar powered wire already wired up so you can't reverse them. So all you have, these are the three wires that come from the pump. And directions right there that comes with it tells you how to wire number one, two, and three in. This right here is the wire I just put in. This one right here is for the tank sensor. It tells you when the tank is full and it shuts the pump off. And then this one over here is the sensor that's down in the well. And what it does is if the water gets too low, it shuts off and keeps you from burning the pump up. And then what you have here is a speed control from one to 10. That's just how fast it'll pump, depending on the recovery rate of your well. And then right here's a timer up here on this dial. And what that does is it gives you from zero to 30 minutes to wait, if it shuts off, it'll give it as long as 30 minutes for the water to recover in the well before it'll come back on and start pumping again. This well here does like 40 gallons a minute, so we're not really worried about it. So I've got it set at like zero. Um, we are pumping up the hill. I don't know why I just set it up about eight or nine. I don't really like to go to 10. Don't know why I just do. But let me, that's all it takes to do this thing. So let me go ahead and bolt this thing back up and we'll turn it on for you. Well, here it is. On off switch right here in the very bottom corner. We've got everything powered up, all the lights come on and it says the power is on and the MPPT has to light up. It's first thing here in the morning, it might not have full sun yet, but the pump light of MPPT will come on, then the pump will come on there's the pump running right now. So there's enough power right now for the pump to come on. And the MPPT light will come on here as soon as it gets the maximum power point tracking part of it. 
and yes it will be blinking and that is right there's an air light here if anything goes wrong it'll tell you whether it's low power when the tank is full up on the hill this light comes on because if you look up here and you don't see anything on you'll want to know why the pump's not running you look down here and it says the uh, tank is full if the pump's not working and you want to know why and it says right here well low so it may be waiting for the water to recover these things are really made so that the homeowner can put them in and we are running this thing with two 250 watt panels so we are putting 500 watts into it and right there let me zoom back in here and the MPPT light is now charging and water is now flowing in the tank up on top of the hill well the wires that come from the pump and everything else come up here but you have the power line and then the well sensors which is kind of hard you can see my finger that's two of them right there this right here is the well sensor wire and no this isn't water lines it is a garden hose i just have them down here we'll put them in here this entire property is mowed and maintained with a weed eater and if you can actually imagine this little piece of wire getting in front of a weed eater it ain't gonna last long so then you're either going to lose your well sensor wire which will burn the pump up or it'll cut the one that says the tank's full and then the pump will never shut up so i think we got everything here caught up let's head up the top of the hill and let me show you the tank in place let me express my feelings that uh from the wellhead all the way up to this tank on this side to fill the tank is just under 600 foot of pipe linear feet going up to get 80 couple feet high from the tank coming back down to the house is over 600 foot of pipe and except for little sections around here i gotta admit this is the first time i didn't have to dig the trench and it was kind of nice we're going to have everything now this is a vertical tank i've got it sitting on its side it's a light gray color if you open the lid you can see inside of it this tank's got a little bit of age on it. it's never been used this person was given this tank the people that had it went with horizontal tanks that they buried and this one here we are really going to try to stick it in the ground up to about here somewhere we're going to try to get two foot 30 inches in the ground maybe just because this is actually where the pipes and the valves will be of course it'll be sitting straight up and down but that'll be underground so it don't freeze this is actually an inlet which will be just a vent but i wanted to show you this thing just to keep the algae and everything else down in it even though it is going to be way up in these trees up on the hill we're going to paint it black one, it won't stand out in the woods if anybody's walking around. And two, keep the algae and everything else down in it. All the new tanks now either come out dark green or black. And uh, like I said, this one has some age. It was sitting in a building. We bleached the inside of it. We cleaned the outside. And we're going to paint it before we take it up there in the woods. Well, there it is. We got the whole thing painted black. I still got a little bit of painting tray and roller and this took just a little bit less than a quart I like using that Krylon spray paint but if it takes three cans to paint a 275 gallon tote it probably takes six seven cans and that's eight nine dollars a can so if you're gonna pay 50 60 bucks you might as well pay ten dollars for a quart of this thing and just paint it with a cheap paint it ain't gotta be great as long as it sticks to the plastic but hopefully we'll have some help come and try to get this thing up the hill well i'm most of the way up the hill i wanted to stop and kind of show you that down here in this light spot is down where the well is and we got ditch dug all over the place but right here from the rental property we brought an additional line in and that comes up this other pipe so there's actually two of them and I'll show you as we head up here um, 
how that works. What I've done, one line here comes from Hobart the rental property, which is the grid powered pump. And one of them is the solar powered pump that's coming up. But what we did is we put bulkhead fittings in the flat spot of the tank. And as you can see, I mean, this tank's gonna get back filled probably close to three foot high. But those pipes go inside the tank and come up and that way they won't freeze and this right here is just the wire for the sensor that'll be bolted down if you remember me telling that's just a vent let me open the lid and show you the inside well, as you can tell this is the one if i can get in here this is the one right here that comes in from the grid and that's actually just a livestock trough water filling device so when it gets up to that level it shuts off and this right here is the pipe that comes from the solar powered pump in and then on that other pipe right there you can hard to tell is where the sensor is and that just tells you when it gets up to that level the solar pump shuts off or the grid and the grid power is just when it gets up to the level of that float it just shuts off and shuts off itself well, here's the outflow, and I put a valve on it. Not quite sure why, but we'll take a piece of six inch PVC pipe and go around it, cut like a horseshoe over top of it to fit over that valve, and it'll come up about 30 inches deep so we can ever get in there and turn that valve off. But then this is the outflow line all the way back down through the woods, all the way to the house. And I do appreciate them boys digging that thing for me. One thing I guess I should mention is the solar powered line, the solar powered pump line that comes in, comes up and of course it discharges above the water level. Because when the solar power stops, what we've got, if you go back to my other video on how to install a solar powered pump, down in the well about three, four foot, we drilled a hole in that pipe about a sixteenth of an inch. And when the sun goes down and it stops pumping water, that will drain that line back down all the way to the well. And that way that line doesn't freeze in the wintertime. Well, kind of hard to tell, but this black poly line right here in the middle is the one that comes into the house. That valve's on. This valve here is the grid one. Comes into the line. I have a whole house filter behind here. And they are on gravity feed water right now. But if I can ever be any help to you, answer questions, or come out and do some water at your place, don't hesitate to call. It's what we do here at Carolina Homestead Planner. So, and as usual, like it, share it, subscribe, tell your friends about it, and I'll get up with you on the next one. Thank you.